America's favorite for what we put in. Celebrity sin number two and seven deadly Hollywood sins, all new tomorrow at 10. What three aspects of your life do you never want to ever change? Oh, that's good. Um, that's a very good question, though. My, my, my humor, my, my down to earth humor, which I think I've managed to keep over the years. Um, family ties, I think that's, that's very important. I think um, good communication with your husband and your children. By late 1998, communication between Rod Stewart and his wife, Rachel Hunter, began to break down. After eight years as Mrs. S, the former supermodel needed a change. I think I had a huge identity crisis. I was 21 when I got married. I had two children by the time I was 23, 24. I mean, I did a lot. Um, it was a complete freak out. I mean, I was pretty full on for eight years. That Christmas, the Stewart family was in London, where Rod was touring. But the holiday was cut short when Rachel left for their home in Palm Beach, Florida, taking the kids with her. Within days, the couple issued a joint statement. It came to quite a surprise when they were getting a separation because I, I didn't see any of the signs. There was no signs. There was no fighting. There was no... It just kind of, it just kind of happened. To go and hurt somebody who you've been with for eight years, you know, and tell them, look, I'm going through this stuff and I don't know what I'm gonna do or where I'm gonna go with it. That's, that's hard. I don't wanna talk about too much about this, but I was in that marriage for the long term. As it happens, it didn't work out. It wasn't her fault, it wasn't my fault. Their impending divorce sparked headlines worldwide. Closer to home, Kimberly consoled her dad. The 19-year-old moved into the cottage on her father's Beverly Hills estate to be near him. There were so many years, you know, that I'd missed with him that I felt finally like I wanted to kind of, you know, nurture our relationship a little bit and spend more time with him. When he and Rachel broke up, I think he really kind of turned to Kimberly as a shoulder to cry on. I think she got the chance finally to be really, really close to her dad, you know, and to really, really be in his life, a really important part of his life, without having to share him with another woman, you know, because there was always another woman in his life. She never kind of had him to herself. We became more like friends. My dad was always very strong and very um, not emotional, and it was kind of the first time I got to see his sensitive side, and I took care of him, and you know, I think that he appreciates that. Rod struggled to recover from the breakup. Then, from out of the blue, another crisis. During a routine checkup, doctors discovered a growth on Stewart's thyroid gland. The singer was diagnosed with throat cancer. It was very traumatic just to hear that word, you know, especially when you you're so fit, as I, I thought I was always being fit, you know. So it was, it was very upsetting. He actually didn't tell me, and I didn't find out until I was watching a VH1 thing that he was doing. He openly admitted it, and I just started bawling. The time he was diagnosed uh, with the cancer, we were making a record together. We had to stop making the record for him to go and have the operation. In May of 2000, Rod Stewart went into surgery. Of all places, yeah, it happened to be in the, on the thyroid, which is right down there. And they really slit you open, like, all the way through. It's horrible. <laughs> the operation was successful. The scare gave the Stewart clan a wake-up call. I think it was the kids' idea, I think. They said, why can't we just all have Christmas together? And so we all thought that was a great idea. So Rachel and her sister Jackie and Kelly and I cook Christmas dinner here at the house. You know, when there's so many new women and, and new children, you can lose track of where your brother is, your sister, you know, it just, but we've tried to remain close and tried to keep everyone together. While Rod healed, Kimberly coped with her split from longtime boyfriend Scott Kahn. I just felt like that I needed to go be alone and grow up and, you know, do my own thing. When they broke up, I was, like, devastated more than her. <laughs> Kimberly threw herself into a new career. 
My dad's clothes were amazing. It was almost like, I mean, I have to be involved in fashion somehow. I mean, I knew she'd always loved fashion, uh, but I didn't know she had a flair for designing. In the summer of 2000, Kimberly launched a line of jeweled sneakers called Hot Legs, a nod to dear old dad. I just did my shoes one day, my Pumas. I rhinestoned the swish on the Puma. And I went out, and everyone was freaking out about that. And I was like, light bulb goes off. I'm like, hmm, this could be a little good business venture. And so I started selling them at my friend Tracy Ross's store. And she sold out within, like, two days. The following year, the rock star daughter launched her very own fashion line. Pinky Starfish is a clothing company that I started with a friend of mine. And we started making couture dresses. And then we went from couture dresses to making, you know, terry cloth um, jumpsuits and all sorts of different stuff. Kimberly had lots of creativity, but little financial know-how. I really think the line could have really taken off big but they didn't have the funds to keep it up and they really didn't have a business plan. So it kind of folded and she was really, really disappointed. The failed designer consoled herself by appearing in I Can't Deny It, one of her dad's music videos. The song was from Human, Rod's first album since his cancer surgery. You go through what they call muscle and memory loss. So you, all, you forget how to talk a little bit and you forget how to sing. So you have to be, you know, reteach yourself. But we're okay now, thank you. Rod was more than okay. He was in love, again. This time with 29-year-old photographer Penny Lancaster. I first met Penny at the, the party in the London Hotel and they'd swap phone numbers. Um, it was nine months before Rod got in touch, touch with her again. I think he sort of took me as face value as who I was and it was, it was something refreshing, um, you know, having someone to talk to that wasn't Hollywood, because I wasn't interested in his music at the time. I was more interested in him as a person, and he's a very fun character. Um, very, very, you know, lovely to be around, and he's romantic and affectionate, and so, you know, we just grew to like one another. He has a weakness for blondes. He has a weakness for striking women. And I remember the first time I met Penny, I couldn't believe, you know, the Amazonian proportions. And this is, this, extraordinary-looking, beautiful woman. By the end of 2001, everyone agreed. Rod Stewart finally found his match. I adore Penny. I think she has done wonders for my dad, and she's just such a breath of fresh air. Coming up. <laughs> it was funny. And from some